I know it's not Christmas yet with my goodie bags here. You can move that to the front chair and I just put it there. No, it's fine. That's good. Sure, as long as everybody can see me, that's good. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. You know, each and every one of you who are here by a blind appointment, it's not an accident. God knew that you were going to be here thousands of years before he created the earth. He knows the blueprint for each and every one of our lives. He is so such. Well, I raise it up a little bit. Anyways, God bless each and every one of you being here today. In Hosea 4 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, for not knowing him through the word of God. God, he says, My people. We're not talking about precious souls out there that don't know Jesus. We're talking about those that sit in the body of Christ in the pews of many churches around this world. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The word is the most important thing in our life. Number one. Is that not working? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't have to start over again, do I? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so my precious wife Sharon here, she's uh, we have a large harvest table in the kitchen and she's had books all, over, all week long, piled high. Okay, and uh, she's been doing this. This is the first time she has the opportunity to stand with you here and share. But what we're trying to do is we're, gonna, we're trying to introduce that during the week we want to do a Bible study with you. This has been under construction now for almost six months that we would like to uh, start a Bible study. Okay. So, whether, so whether it's home groups, you know, one up in Barry's Bay, in Bancroft, Halliburton, Whitney, somewhere in one of your homes maybe. We'd like to start that during the week. Everybody say amen to that? Amen. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. You know, and on the side there might be homemade goodies. Right, where's Mike? Mike says yes. <laughs> did you guys know that, did anybody say anything about what yesterday was for you guys? Friday. 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 Thank you, hon. <laughs> Friday. Stand up, you two. Come here up here, you two lovebirds. Come on, real quick. Come on. I think they've been, it was their wedding anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary. 72 years? <laughs> That's what it felt like. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can give them, a, give them a hug and kiss. Yeah. <laughs> How many years, guys? 28. 28 years. I was close. How, Trying to catch up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, just stretch your hands forward. Thank you, Jesus. And just say, "We bless you. We love you, Mike and Jan." We bless you. We love you, Mike and Jan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man. So again, um, Sharon is introducing what a Bible study might be during the week. Okay, and uh, we're just going to bless her and uh, allow her to bless us. All right. Okay. Everything working. Everything's Are good you all ready? To, good to go. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly open in prayer before I get started here. We just bow our heads for a quick second. We thank you, Father God, for your awesomeness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. For your word is life. It's nourishment. And Holy Spirit, there's nothing of me but all of you. I pray you open the ears of our understanding and enlighten us, Lord God, with your word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, this week, has, I've been on a wee bit of a mission. And, um, you know, David and I are a little bit eccentric. I think everybody kind of knows that by now. And uh, so, on my mission, I've been studying foundations. Oh, I'm pulling myself off here. In order to do that, you know, safety does come first, so I'm prepared, okay? And I think, as I was going around, I don't think I'm going to do this very well here, uh, checking out foundations, I started in our barn, and I'm sure our pigeons thought I was a little whacked. <laughs> as I was looking and checking everything out, but it was necessary. So I decided I would do some investigating and I got online and did some research about foundations. 
And, uh, you know, I was remembering about the foundation of the church here and other buildings that I had seen. So when I went online, I found the foundation construction process. This is just one. There was lots of them out there. And I'm sure that there could be, this could be tweaked. And I'm sure no expert. <laughs> the foundation of a home or a building is essential to the value and safety of the structure. The construction must be done correctly in terms of type of foundation being formed, avoiding problems with settlement, and properly preparing the subgrading through final curing stages. Each phase of the foundation construction has necessary requirements and components upon which a structure depends. And there are five steps. Step one, groundbreaking, excavation. Then there's the grading of the lot and getting it tested for compaction. Digging tre trenches for the footings. Setting batter boards for, to level the house. There's some, tech, there's some words here that I had never heard of before. <laughs> Two, footings dug, rebar set, and footings poured. Poly steel stem wall forms, stems poured, rough in the plumbing. Step four, radiant heat, inspection, and the poured slab. And number five, cleanup, site grading, block wall. The site is cleaned, cleaned up and prepared for the framing crew. Wow, what a lot of work, right? <laughs> Never knew until I started doing, doing, doing this digging here. Now this process of building used was called the poly steel wall forms. And I kind of remember Mike Something with the church here and you guys building in that way, and that's the only thing I could relate to. Another met method is block work. And then I was reading this, I thought of how my dad had built our garage at home, using large concrete blocks. Now, I was only a kid, but I stood off by the house and I watched this process. My dad was a mechanic by trade but he was never shy to put his hand to any type of work. He did, however, bring this gentleman in from our church, who was a master at this job and in real high demand, and Dad worked alongside of him. As block upon block was laid and row upon row was developed, the structure of the garage took place. Now, you're likely asking yourself, where on earth is she going with this? And I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> when I was reading the Bible the other day, or I guess it was last week, I came across this scripture, and I thought, what is Jesus saying here? Now, I don't know if anybody has their Bible here. I know this day and age, everyone uses their cell phones a lot. But in two places, this is what I was going to read, um, is where I found. So first is in Matthew 7, 24 to 27. I'll start there. Okay, and if everybody's there. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes, comes in and torrents and floodwaters rise, the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Okay, and the second place is where I'm leading all this is in Luke 6. So if you want to turn to there. So Luke 6, 46 to 49. And it says, So why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord? Why don't you when you don't do what I say. I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, 
listens to my teachings, and then follows it. It's like a person who's builds, who builds a house, who digs deep, lays the foundation on solid rock. When the flood waters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a ruin heap. Now I'm going to read this again um, in the New Living Trends. Oh, I did read the, Living, the Amplified, rather, starting at verse 48. He is like a far-sighted, practical, and sensible man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against that house and yet could not be shaken because it had been securely built and founded on the rock. So let's just set the scene here. In Luke, Jesus and his disciples have been traveling from place to place, teaching in large crowds of people he had, who had followed him from all over Judea, Jerusalem, and as far north as the sea coasts of Tyre and Sidon. Now these are people, common folks, some of them were religious leaders, and some were just curious to hear what Jesus was saying. They didn't know anything about Jesus at all. They came to hear him, to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled by evil spirits. In these verses and in other places in the New Testament, Jesus taught in parables. So what is a parable? It's a simple fictional story used to teach a significant lesson. Jesus used these parables to teach his disciples something very profound. In Matthew 13, verses 10 to 12, and if you want to turn there, you're welcome to. I'm going to read this from the NIV. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? And Jesus replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever, whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. We need to unpack this a little bit to see what this parable is actually saying here in these verses. Jesus is clearly showing two very different approaches to life. And I promise I won't. I've got lots of pages here, but I won't, I won't keep you. You don't have to worry, be worried about getting home for lunch. But <laughs> we, can use this, we can use this to see um, how we're going to be building our life every single day. Everyone is building their lives on something. And when the storms of life come, and as all, we all know, they do, the only secure and stable foundation that we have is in God's word. In the summer, most of us enjoy going to the beach. It can be one of those awe moments, relaxing, the tranquility. And when our grandkids come to visit, um, they like going to what they call the Wilbermere Beach, or they kindly call it to the L-shaped dock beach. They swim, they jump off the dock, they run around and do it all over again and they have a great time and it blast. But eventually, out comes the beach toys. They grab their buckets and their shovels and they sit by the edge of the water and they begin to build sandcastles. And oh my, they build lots of sandcastles, one after the other, and then they make roads around their sandcastles and then they build moats around their sandcastles. Now I'm sitting on the beach in my chair, and I'm watching all this and laughing as I'm watching the kids play. But off in the distance, there's a boat. And it seems to be getting closer and closer and going faster. And as it's getting closer, they begin, the, the waves begin to roll in. 
The small waves turn into large wakes and are coming in faster and faster. And then, boom. In a split second, the largest one of the waves roll in and level every single sandcastle. Now the fun and the calm that had been enjoyed is now turned to upset. And in one quick moment, all is destroyed. Let's flip the switch here and let's look at verse 48 again. The person who builds a house digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. Stop. What's the foundation here that Jesus is talking about? It's John 3.16. That he laid down his life in love for the world, for you and for I. That's the foundation. He, Jesus, is also the rock on which the foundation is laid. We have to dig deep into the word to lay the foundation in our lives. And if we do, the promise is that we will not be shaken. Jesus is also referred to as a chief cornerstone. And let's read uh, Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. And again, I'm going to read it in the Amplified here, or the New Living Testament. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. So did you hear what that had to say? We are members, part of God's family. And together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. The cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. Jesus, our cornerstone, our foundation. There are always distractions in our daily lives that want to steal our time, our focus, and the place of our intimacy with our Lord and our Savior. And just like we feed our bodies with food and nourishment, to keep us strong, we need to feed our spirit man with God's word. And that's our source for our spiritual strength. We need it daily. In Psalms 119.2, and I'm just reading from the King James here, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with their whole heart. Again, it's a place of intimacy where you seek him with your whole heart. Psalms 119, dropping down to verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And six, verse 16, I will delight myself in the statues. I will not forget your word. So Psalms 119 is really packed with some wonderful things. Psalm 119, 105. The word is a lamp onto my feet and a light onto my path. God's word gives us direction and guidance every single day. Amen. Psalm 119, 103. How sweet are the words onto my taste, yet sweeter than honey to my mouth. God brings a sweetness to our life and that intimacy in those precious moments where we close ourselves in with our Heavenly Father. There is a sweetness, a fragrance that comes that can't be denied. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, 
you shall ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. The word abide here in this scripture implies deeply rooted, intimate, life-giving relationship as between the vine and the branches. And as we all have likely heard many times about the truth in the Bible about the vine, Jesus being the vine, and we are the branches we've been grafted into him. 1 Peter 1.23 Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Verse 24, for all flesh is as of grass, and all the glory of man is a flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower thereof falls away. Verse 25, but the word of the Lord endures forever, and this is the word which the gospel is preached unto you. The word endureth here, means keep doing whatever God has called you to do. Stay the course and be faithful regardless of any opposition or hardship. You and I are of the heavenly kingdom, not of this world, not of this world's kingdom. Anything in this world can be and will be shaken. But those who build their lives on Jesus Christ and him alone, who is our solid rock, will remain stable and strong. So I just want to encourage you today, as David comes forward here, just the preciousness of God's word. And I know how there's so much out in the world that pulls us away. And I know sometimes it's, it's not always easy. I get that. It's called discipline. And that's not always easy. But God will never leave us or forsake us. And the more we spend that time with him, and purpose in our heart, not just to make it, which is fine to to read just a quick little word, but when we get into, when he said about that intimacy, it's that intimacy when we get into his presence and seek him. It's just just awesome and precious. And it stabilizes us and gives us a strength because he is our rock. Amen.
the air I breathe. peace that passes all understanding. Let us just enter into the holy of holies and praise Him. Praise Him. He is worthy of all praise. He is all worthy. Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, I'm desperate for you. Without you, and 
I think now you're there she goes. There. You all know? Yeah, thank you. Okay, guys. Hallelujah. 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 The precious Holy Spirit is in this place. The precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not doing communion yet. We're not doing communion yet. If you want to just turn with me to Exodus chapter 3, please. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 God laid this upon my heart this week that this is his house. We are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. To think of that honor, how precious that is. That through the word of God that abides within us, he that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. We're like Velcro again. through his precious Holy Spirit, abides within us. Can we even begin to comprehend the love of the Father for his children? Each and every one of you, each and every one of you are his children. And as he hung upon that cross, he exchanged his life for ours, that we may live for eternity. How precious that is. We are a blessed people. Amen. We are children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. If He is for us, who can be against us? 
Amen. In the book of the Exodus, again, we're always going to go with this. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. We, the Word of Life Outreach, we are on the backside of the desert. We're miles from anywhere. A voice crying forth in the wilderness. What God has shown me, and again, we're gonna, I'm going to ask Pastor Albert and Jan to share something here in a minute. But God has showed me multitudes that will be coming into this place. And not, a who, not because of who stand behind the pulpit or who's singing or playing music, but because we lift Jesus on high. Amen. And the power of the Holy Spirit is here to open blind eyes, to open deaf ears, to raise the dead spiritually. Hallelujah. Now, I wouldn't mind seeing a few raised from the dead physically either. <laughs> Hallelujah. And came to the mountains, the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sign, why the bush is not burnt. Each and every one of us are carriers of the fire. John the Baptist said, I come to baptize you in water, but one comes greater than I who will baptize you with the fire, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We are carriers of that fire within our spirit, within our temple. We carry the fire of God. Hallelujah. We are the light in the darkness. This world is very dark. There's a lot hurting. There are many that are out there dying in the highways and the byways. And he's given us the honor to carry his light, the son of the living God. And when God showed me this, that Moses turned aside and he had to come and, to see this sign, this sign and wonder. Each and every one of you, you're a sign and wonder. You carry God Almighty within you and through you. You are a new creation through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People will come here to see the signs and the wonders. The signs and the wonders. Pastor Albert, can you just stand real quick? Tell us about that sign you saw on the building here. I had a vision that this place is going to be built. That wall is going to be knocked down. And there was a thousand foot light and right above this building here. So everybody could see it. And that's when I have it. God gives you the vision. Amen. Hey man, that's a sign and a wonder. Do you not think that's going to draw many? <laughs> Jan, you want to tell us what you saw? He is Shokotanda. God gave me a vision, and it was an evening vision, that uh, the cars were lined up on one side, the highway on the other side, as far as you could see, and all there was was lights, and there was valet parking because people couldn't actually get in until somebody moved or was more room made. Outside, the Amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Because it's all about souls. It's all about souls. Yes. It's all about the Father's heart, how much He loves us. And He loves those that are out there in the highways, the byways, beyond these doors. Yes. That's what it's about. It's not to bring any man glory. To glorify his son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see the great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. 
Each and every one of us, that should be our heart cry. Here I am. When the Father calls your name, you're there and you say, Father, here I am. 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 And he said, draw nigh hither. Put off thy shoes of thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. This is holy ground. Where you stand, whether it be out there, somewhere in your community, in your home, in the shopping plaza, in the grocery store, wherever you are, as you carry God's presence, you are standing on holy ground. And those are going to come to you and see, see, look upon you as a sign and wonder. And you'll get to share about the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The redemptive work of Calvary. That we have been redeemed, atoned, reconciled to the Father through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That it was shed for each and every one of us. For it was shed for each and every one of those to be on these doors. The blood of Jesus Christ. God the Father gave the greatest gift that he could give. His only begotten Son. That whosoever shall believeth on him shall not perish. But have everlasting life. Again, we abide in an everlasting life. We have everlasting life within us. How precious is that? How precious is that? Hallelujah. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of Moses. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And when the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and he have heard their cry. Egypt here represents the world today. Back then, Egypt was the world. So God is saying, I've heard their cry. I've seen their affliction. And we are to be the signs and the wonders to go forth carrying the gospel. The precious name of Jesus. Wow, what an honor. What a privilege. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. This is a glorious day. The day that the Lord hath made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramakaya, Ramasi, Pushanda. Again, Matthew 3, 1, or 11. I, John the Baptist, baptize you with water unto repentance. But he, Jesus, that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy even to carry or undo. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hebrews 1, 7 says we are ministers of fire. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Ramakayanda, Ramasu, Kotanda.